Hello guys, this is Pavlos Korob from Laravel Daily Team and Laravel Daily Video Channel. Today I have a question for you guys. Uh, I will share my thoughts on something and will ask you how to how to do that properly. So I want to talk about seeding, about database seeding. And you see the, the page of Laravel documentation here uh, where they talk about seeding. So as you all know, the database layer in Laravel has two folders, migrations and seeds. And migrations are for changes in database structure and seeds are for changes in the data or for testing data. So the problem here is different people use seeds <clears throat> in a different way. If you look at that Laravel documentation, like official uh, documentation, it talks about uh, where the seeds are stored, how to write them basically, how to run them, and then how to use factories to fake the data, some like create 50 random users, then how to call those seeders from the main database seeder file, and how to run them, uh, run all seeds or run one class, or run arts and migrate with seeds. And that's it. Uh, basically what I mean is uh, documentation says everything about the mechanics, about how to use seeds, uh, but not actually about how to use it in proper real projects, which is actually all over the place. I mean, most of the things in Laravel documentations are about mechanics, syntax, and uh, rules, but not about how to use it in, in real life, basically. So let's discuss that. Um, the problem uh, uh, came from our internal discussion on our Quick Admin Panel project, and um, we argued with our customer how to use the seeds. So how we use it in our team, there are two cases when we use the seeds. The first case is for testing. So uh, for um, whenever we build the project feature after feature, we add more seeds there. And every time we want to test the project, we just clear all the database and run all the seeds from the beginning with fake data some of some of that data might be not exactly fake, but I mean we fill in uh, fill in the data tables, not data tables, database tables, uh, with uh, with testing data uh, for our internal testing or for client testing, like for for project to have kind of real or semi fake data. So that's case number one. Case number two is to see the real data for real projects for one time. So, for example, if if I know that the project will have um, articles, for example, and articles will have categories, and for the beginning of the project, client told us that we need like seven categories of articles, or like settings, it will have like uh, these and these roles, for example, for users. So some of the data will be totally 100% fixed for the beginning of the project, and then the client will be able to add more uh, to that project. So uh, case number two for using seeders is to run migrations on production database, on live database, but only one time. So for the, for the live deployment, basically. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of uh, the, the real life scenario is like a client gives us an Excel spreadsheet with some data, with like settings or some, I don't know, list of, of articles maybe or types or something like that and we uh, transform that into database seed file. So whenever, um, whenever the project is deployed on a new server, for example, if we need to migrate somewhere, uh, or um, even for our internal testing for it to be more real, uh, with like more real data, we use that seeder. But the third case that appeared uh, in our internal discussions, uh, as I mentioned, one of our customers for Quick Admin Panel uh, argued uh, so, I remind you, Quick Admin Panel is generating admin panel and including seeds. So, for example, if we go if you go online and generate admin panel uh, on our website uh, and enter some dummy data for testing, it will generate seeds files. Uh, but uh, we don't actually launch the seeds; we just uh, create them, as here in Laravel documentation, we create something like that like uh, store data after data and um, the person argued the customer that we need to check if that seed was already uh, run before 
So, for example, we need to check um, how to rephrase that. So, for example, in the middle of the project, uh, you have a new database table, new CRUD, new model, uh, new object, and then seeds for that. So for example, in the middle of the project, the project is already live and running, and that's fine, and you need to add some new thing, a new seed for that. Uh, and how to, how to run that seed? Basically, you need to run all the seeds, like run db uh, seed, uh, or you need to run db seed class something with parameter. But if you use something like continuous integration and you have deployment scripts there, uh, the deployment script wouldn't even know what uh, what seed uh, was running before or uh, how much data is seeded. It will always run db seed. So from that point of view, our customer told us that we need to check um, check if that seed was already uh, run before or if that uh, database table has some data. Uh, and uh, in my point of uh, view, it's kind of wrong. I don't know. That's the question what I want to ask you guys. Do you use something like that? Do you use seeds um, in the middle of the project for seeding one uh, specific table or one specific set of data uh, with checking if that uh, data is already in the database or not? Uh, in my opinion, that use of seeds is kind of wrong. Not exactly wrong, but not typical. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe my experience is different and maybe there are a lot of you guys who use uh, seed exactly like that, like in the middle of the project to seed the data for that new table. Uh, if so, please share your knowledge and share your tips, uh, tips uh, at the bottom, uh, like in comments on YouTube video. Uh, and let's discuss how to actually use the seeds because, uh, again, getting back to the problem, I think People use it really differently, and there's no one correct way, but uh, let's discuss, let's share the knowledge, and see you in the next videos of Laravel Daily Video.